Are you counting us in? And welcome back to Darwin Football Stadium here at Larrakia Park on a beautiful Tuesday evening for this Round 19 clash between Darwin Hearts Football Club and Mindel Aces Football Club. My name's John Dean. I'm joined by John Tamburis giving, him, giving us his uh, expert commentary here tonight. Former professional A-League player, current FFNT football director. Uh, football director, technical director, sorry, I should say, John. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thanks, uh, JD. And again, uh, great night for it. Uh, both teams went for it uh, on the weekend. Um, so pretty much a rematch. So there's bragging rights here tonight. So looking forward to seeing this one. Yeah, 100%. So for those that aren't familiar with the league, this Round 19 clash is one of six games that will be played across a Tuesday night over the next six weeks to make sure that we get the full 20 rounds into our season. Uh, and so as John just pointed out there, Mindel Aces played against Darwin Hearts on uh, Saturday afternoon, probably the most entertaining of the three games across the course of the weekend and some very different storylines leading in so this is the 10th game of the season for both sides Mindel Ace is on 19 points two points behind Hellenic on top this is their catch-up game so they have the opportunity to go into the halfway point of the season on top of the ladder if they can get a result tonight meanwhile for Hearts at the other end of the table they're currently sitting in six John yep um, two points behind Port Darwin but a win would take them joint fourth place with Azuri so plenty to play for from both sides and uh, I guess putting your players hat on John the, the fixtures have been coming thick and fast. Three games in a week for Hearts, three games in, in eight days for Mindel Aces. How do you attack that as a player? Well, again, managing your body. I mean, looking after your body. So, again, some of these players pulled up a few... Uh, sorry, pulled up a bit sore on the weekend. So they're looking to obviously get it right and obviously midweek games. And who doesn't like playing midweek games? Under lights, great weather. So speaking of um, uh, Damon Audrett before the game, um, training's been very, very light. It was just a tactical session, and same what uh, Daniel McCormack did, pretty much similar. So, obviously, talking tactics, uh, things that they can improve on. Obviously, they know each other. They played each other on Saturday. So, again, bragging rights today. And uh, in, in those conversations, was there any changes? Because I know we saw last week Hellenic and Port Darwin had the two games in, in four days, and they both went for very different approaches. John Francis had uh, probably a second string 11 in that first game and then and started with his big guns in the second game, whereas Lee Addison went with his best available 11 both times. Both of these coaches would have been their best available on Saturday. Uh, any changes today? Again, from what I've seen on the team sheets, everything's pretty similar. Obviously, there's a few niggling injuries, which they're looking at players, if they're going to be fit or not. Uh, they've come through okay. But in terms of both, both squads, they, they look pretty similar to what was on Saturday. Um, and again, probably minor, minor changes. So again, I'm looking forward to a really, really good game. But um, it's, I'm excited for this one, actually, JD. Yeah, looking forward to it. And as you can probably hear behind us, the crowds are building. We spoke about it in the call on the weekend. Definitely the two sets of supporters that have set the bar for everybody else this season. The drums are already banging. We're a few minutes away from kickoff. So we'll leave you there, and we'll join you in just a few minutes' time for the kickoff here at Darwin Football Stadium, Round 19.
Yeah, you just tell me when. Who's the, who's the big guy that played for us left back, right back? Oshima Mali, 21. And welcome back to Darwin Football Stadium here at Larrakia Park on a beautiful Tuesday evening. I would like to start by paying our respects to our elders past, present and emerging for this beautiful park that we play our football on tonight. And while the teams are taking the field here, we've got Darwin Hearts running left to right on your TV in the first half in their traditional red strip with the blue shorts and blue socks, while Mindel Aces are in their away kit, the black kit with the fluoro blue socks. And we'll run through the team sheets for you very quickly. So starting with Darwin Hearts, we've got Ashimba Mali, Mamun Diem, Drabu Kaki, Juma Mwizi, Makamba Nwolo, uh, Kasim Keane is captain, and then we've got Niroz Shrestha, Rabin Shrestha, Santos Shrestha, in goal is Jordan Stobbard, and Scott Jaynes, who returns to the club after their previous stint in Division 1, going straight into the starting side. Meanwhile, for Mindel Aces, there's been a late change with Arlo Race coming out of goals and Phil Weeks coming in. That change was made just minutes before kickoff. Their starting side is Charles Ariku, Eamon Kelly, Taiki Kudo, Mario Kuokanen, Marcus Lee, Tavian Ludvigsen takes the armband tonight in the number 14, the league's second top scorer. Matthew Mifsud, Tan U, William Reeve, Christopher Reinberg makes his starting debut after going, after going well on the bench on the weekend. And that is your two sides as we get the referee underway here on a Tuesday evening. And John, I'll bring you in. How do, you look, uh, how do the teams line up? Again, you're looking at uh, Mindel's at, at, you know, attacking options up front. Obviously, you've got... Uh you know, Charles Arucu out on the, on the wide, um, wide-hand side. Um, again, you know, going forward, they've got so much to offer. Um, it'll be a test for, I think it'll be a test for uh, uh, Hearts tonight. Um, and again, but when you look at Hearts, they, they, as the game goes on and on, they, they, they get more and more confident. So it'll be an interesting one tonight. Obviously, can they back up, you know, they, they played on Saturday. So most of these guys will be sore and, um, you know, looking at how they back it up today. Yeah, definitely. As Ashimba Mali has the ball here and uh, tries to find an option, ball goes back to Keem, who says, we'll get that out of here and play it up top. And that's James running away from the ball in his first start for the club. As I mentioned before, Moise on the ball now. Finds Shrestha. Opens the ball up to Kumi. He's back in the starting side. Nice ball through him. And easily cleaned up by Weeks at the back. So that's going to be a battle tonight. Uh, Mweezy was, was in all sorts of space on Saturday, and I, I certainly think that's an area that Hearts will look to target, John, as uh, the ball goes away for the first corner of the evening. And uh, certainly with Mamoon in the team and, and James coming in, uh, they've got a bit more size in the box from these set pieces, John. Uh, and they do, and, and we talk about size, but they've got, um, they've got a bit of pace about them as well up front as well. So in terms of attacking options, both teams have got those attacking options, but um, the one that stood out for me today is... Um, Misford playing in a, in a centre-back role. He's, he's been playing on that left side uh, for Mindel, left, left back if you call it. So he's, he's actually switched out and he's gone into the middle and, and young Marcus Lee's gone out to the left. So there's an, there's an actual centre-half playing left back and a, a left back playing centre-half. So interesting call by Daniel McCormack tonight. Yeah, and you can see already, and it's off camera a little bit, but the voice that Mifsud brings to that role, he's obviously in there for his organisational skills. I'm sure he won't mind me saying. He's got an engine that'll go all day, but he's, his top speed's not quite the same, so he's clearly there to organise that back four against what's going to be quite a, quite a fast and multi-pronged attack from Hearts. As the ball goes back, mweezy has got the ball again now for Hearts. A bit of a lazy turnover there from, from Mindel at the back as Mifsud, that man you just talked about, will come onto the ball here and play it home to the keeper. Weeks takes his time on the ball. Had a great game for the uh, Darwin under-23 side. Phil Weeks, the half that he played in goal. Yeah. Um, great young kid. Great under the post. Again, um, you know, obviously looking at the, the next generations of goalkeepers coming through, JD. So um, played very, very well in terms of the way the, the under-23s played that night. Played out from the back. He looked really, really comfortable under the sticks and he's one for the future. Mifsud. Plays it back to Reeve. He'll open it up to Tanu on the right-hand side, the North Crest scoreboard side of the, board, of the ground. There's loads of space in the middle here as Ludvigsen drifts into that space and picks the ball up, and he's got time to run. Ball just a little bit over hit there. Reinberg was no chance of pulling that one down, and you can hear the appreciation of the Darwin Hearts fans as Nero Shrestha will take the throw. 
Yeah, we talk about Ludvigsen, you know, clever, getting into little pockets there and, you know, in between the midfield and, and, and that forward line. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's actually, it's hard for the defenders. Do they go or don't they? And he picks up, you know, picks up the ball in great areas and turns and that's where he makes the game for Mindel. So it'll be interesting how he goes tonight with that. And for those that, that aren't, aren't familiar with, uh, with Ludvigsen, he's, he'd had the better part of 10 years away from the game prior to this season. So this is only his 10th his game back, uh, John. So looking, looking very classy. So you can only imagine he's going to get better uh, as time goes on. But clearly not just the play that he does on the pitch. He must be doing something right off the pitch to be getting the armband so soon in his stint with Mindelaces. As Neroy Shrestler gets the ball and looks to release James. No, he's gone down the right-hand channel to Mweezy. Mweezy's well, got time and space to measure across, or will he drop the shoulder as he did so well on the weekend? Back to Shrestha. Patient build up here from Hearts. Shrestha finds the midfield. I think that was a shot there. Ball comes back in. Second ball will be Hearts. Over the top to Shrestha. Neither player pulling out good football there between Ludvigsen and Rabin. Kuar Konen. He was good on debut the six. Tries to chip in over the top. And well collected by Jordan Stobbard. <laughs> so that's Eamon Kelly that uh, showed a good turn of foot there for Mindel. He'll be, he'll be dangerous in behind if they can get those balls in. Two who's impressed me early is the, is the six for Mindel. Um, haven't seen a lot of him. But and Ludvigsen will potentially get to here. So well claimed by Jordan Stobbard. Yeah. Yeah, so speaking about the, the six, six there for Mindel, obviously new. Yeah, new Mar setup. Mario Kuakonen, I, I believe last week was his first game, yeah. um, but looked assured. Uh, he's a big lump of a lad too. He's not going to lose too many aerial duels. Uh, acquitted himself very well. And time here for Lee. Nice one-touch ball there from Weeks. Mifsud has plenty of time to turn. Forward to Ryan Berg. Back to Kua Conan. And, and you can see there Charles Ariku still as he gets on the ball now. Just finding his feet in that more central role with a beautiful ball forward to Ludvigsen. And out strongly is Jordan Stobbard. Neither of them pulling out of that tackle. John, you could hear it from here. Yeah, uh, again, you, when you've got big Jordan coming out, yeah, um, one thing I'll do is I'll stop. I wouldn't be going there, to be honest. So, again, Ludvigsen obviously, you know, as you want your good strikers to do, they, they want you want them to hunt down everything and go for everything. And wasn't it was it wasn't too far off there. So Iriku, discipline in defence from Hearts that they showed so much of the weekend. Two of them there on Iriku every time he gets the ball. They'll need to continue doing that because he's so dangerous. It's more easy up in the air. A kudos ball here, miscontrol. Rabin Shrestha, another one who's settled into this Hearts team well after only a few games. As the ball goes back to Stobart and the centre back split. Should be Karki's ball and is. Shrestha back to Karki. Lively start by both teams, JD. Um, doesn't look like any, any, you know, fatigue from Oh, so we've from, got a turnover Saturday. here to Reinberg. Sorry, John. Had the opportunity to shoot. He took one on from there on the weekend, didn't uh, just shied away from it there, but ball's gone to a Riku over the top to that man you talked about, Kua Conan. Rather messy in the middle from both teams, and it's cleared away. Sorry to cut you off there, but opportunity presented itself there on the turn. Again, we, we're talking about that transition. You know, Mindelaces will, will try and force that error up, up in that final third. And when they do, they've got the players to actually transition very, very quick and create goal-scoring opportunities. It's Kelly so, rips the ball into the back post. Ball's there for Ariku. Gets it on target, but it's rather a meek effort there. Sort of stabbed at it more than anything else. And the referees just stop play here. Nalor will get that one back, but it looks like we've got an injury in back play. Yeah, it I doesn't, doesn't I, look good there, JD. He was uh, holding his knee as he's gone down there, so hopefully it's not too serious. I think uh, Iriku unintentionally may have just scissored him there as, as he went for the shot, just got his court, leg caught in an awkward position, but hopefully he can walk that off. He's a tough, tough little man, Karki, so I'm, I'm sure he'll be fine. Good pace of the game as well, um, considering both games played, both teams have played that on, on that Saturday. So, yeah, that's, it's going to be interesting to see how that one develops because Mindel Ace is certainly, uh, for those around the league, know, are known to be the fittest team in the league. Um, and, you know, 
we're back now for, for seven, eight weeks. The other teams have sort of caught up a little bit, particularly those as there's a foul there on Ludvigsen. That'll be a middle free kick in a, a nice area to get across in. The other teams have sort of caught up a little bit, particularly those that weren't necessarily doing the right thing in the off-season. Um, but you'd expect the Daniel McCormick coach team to be able to run the 90 out here. I'm not really sure where hearts are at with the game so close together. Yeah, um, so it could be a very open second half. Yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, we spoke about, you know, in terms of pre-season, obviously COVID hit us early. and uh, But when Mindel came back, obviously they, they their, their fitness regime is pretty hectic. We spoke about it pre-game. So they're finely tuned. and um, But as you said before, most of the other teams are starting to gain their fitness now. So, you know, we're only eight weeks in now. So looking forward for, you know, finals and so forth. So as long as they keep, keep away from injuries, it's going to be very, very interesting. That was a dangerous ball in there that Hearts let bounce, but they could be on the counter here as Rabin Shrestha opens up, but he puts a foot on it and turns it back, and they're, they're happy to main possession in their own half. As Kaki puts the ball long, aimlessly really, as Mifsud puts that one away to Lee. High foot there. Unfortunately, that'll be a free kick to, to Mindel. Santos Stressler putting his head there in some places where people wouldn't put their boot, their boot, John. Iriku from distance. You don't mind that? No, I, I don't. And he's got it in his locker. And uh, another interesting point from Daniel McCormick, he's got Charles Iriku, who's made a name for himself out on the right wing. He's playing him as a 10. So he's getting, he's getting into little areas there where he's getting in little turns, half turns, just, uh, just outside the box. And as I said, you give him space, he won't hesitate to have a crack. And, he's, and we said he's got it in his locker. And you, you saw that on the weekend in that game. They started him a bit more centrally, probably the first time at senior level that he's played there. And he just felt his way into a little bit. Uh, and then they moved him back out on the wing later in the game. But good to see they're persevering with that and giving him an opportunity because him on the ball is dangerous for the other team. And that's what they need more of, Mindel. Exactly. And, and we speak about, you know, Charles Aruku needs space. If he hasn't got space, um, you know, it will, be, it will be difficult with him, you know, in terms of his pace. So it's an interesting ploy because obviously when you're playing out in the wings, JD, you need that space you know, to play out in the wing. In that middle in that middle area, it will be hard to find that space. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes tonight. And that man we're talking about, Charles Ariku, has just won his team a free kick here. And it looks like uh, your man number six, Kua Conan, will be, be hitting it. Yeah, he's impressed me so far. I know we're only 10 minutes in, but he's impressed me so far. So Mindel showed their wares with a number of set-piece routines from free kicks and corners in the game on the weekend. They had a, a very deep repertoire but the way they're lining up here this just looks to be a straightforward shot on target <clears throat> doesn't appear as though there's going to be any trickery from this particular set piece as Kuwa Conan steps over it curls it over the wall and a meter maybe two meters wider the goal again look look like look like Stoddart had that had that um, had that covered as well so again great little effort there just uh, I think it was just distance might have tested him a little bit there And an interesting change here from Mindel in terms of their formation. They normally line up in a 4-2-3-1. Um, it seems to be more of a 4-1-4-1. Just the one holder tonight, John, in this first 10-15 minutes with, with Kudo expected to do that work. Uh, a, a more adventurous formation, I'd suggest. Again, you know, I think Daniel McCormack knows that, you know, if they win tonight, they go top of the table. So he's not playing for any draws tonight. He's going for that win, and, 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 and so is Hearts. Obviously, we spoke about Hearts, you know, how important the three points are there for them tonight. So... Both coaches are going out to win and play attacking football and as a neutral. That's what we want to see. Uh, it's what you love. It's what you love in the Darwin Premier League. Uh, any team can beat anyone on their night, and uh, defence is often secondary. Both teams going for the win in the three points, as you just said. So it'll be a Mindel throw here as we come up to in the 13th minute. Tanu looking for some options, and he finds Will Reeve. Reeve will play it back to Mifsud as they look to open up the pitch. Long 30-metre ball out to Reinberg. Lovely control. Iriku. Kua Konen. Looks to play in the channel to Lee. Lee plays at home. Happy to recycle. Mifsud with the ball forward to Reinberg. That was a nice ball there, John. Great ball, yep. Great ball into that. Deflection. Lufthikens on the ball. He's got the quicker of it. Good toe poke in, but lovely save by Stoddard. Ball still here for Mindel. Kua Conan, rather theatric dive there. 
Yeah, great save by Sidart. Again, he was off his line very, very quick. Um, crowd's quite vocal here tonight as well for a midweek game. Um, a few people in the stand here tonight. So, obviously, the supporters know how important this game is for their, for their team. So, great that we're getting... Um, a good crowd in here tonight. Yeah, where else would you rather be? We haven't got the near 500 that we had on Saturday, but they're making a lot of noise, and they've had a bit to, bit to cheer about here in the first 14 minutes. And Ludvigsen, when you see him get that front position there, the way the way he's been kicking him in, the form that he's been in, you expected him to store, but yeah. Stoddard did well. Yeah, he did. He came out, made himself big, and that's what you want your goalkeeper. Last last line of defence, he came out, made himself big, and great, great save. Curling ball from Mifsud. Just missed the head, and he's offside, unfortunately, there, Tanu, but we didn't get in any way. A great ball in. Yeah, Kuar Conan just missed the header, which I think put Lee off, and then unfortunately Tanu was offside. Stoppard looking to play quickly here to Rabin Shrestha. Turns, looks up. Ball over the top to nobody in particular, which is cleaned up by Taiki Kudo. Good to see him back in the starting side after a couple of weeks out and then starting on the bench on the weekend. And this is Nero Shrestha that will take the throw, and he had a tasty battle with Charles Ariku for an hour. Uh, on Saturday, and unfortunately with the positional change, we probably won't get to see that tonight, but he plays the ball back here to Santos Shrestha. Leaves him a little bit short, but it still gets his way to Rabin Shrestha. He shoots, takes the deflection. That was on target before the deflection. Kudo's got the ball now as they look to break with the Riku. And Charles has played himself into trouble there, and the goal scorer from the weekend, Nalor, who has speed to burn down the left-hand side, and Will Reeve, timely intervention out for a corner. Again, you know, you're looking at that, that transition as well, JD. Charles Aruku, you know, getting the ball in his in his defensive third. That's where you, you don't want Charles Aruku getting the ball in the defensive third. You want him higher up the pitch. So I think Daniel McCormack would see that, and I won't be surprised if he starts uh, playing with that and starts putting him up a bit higher. As the ball swung in from the right-hand side, oh, it was a good run from Santos Stress there. He just didn't get it. And Oshin Bamali, lovely ball for Nero Stressler, two under-23 representatives there. Stressler's just muscled off the ball by Ludvigsen. Nothing in that. That's just good body work from the bigger man. Out to Kua Konen. He looks to put it back down that right-hand channel to Taiki Kudo. What a motor he's got, and he's gone straight round Keane. Unfortunately, I think that'll... Oh, no, it's a middle throw. I thought that might have taken a deflection on the way out, but my eyes have deceived me. Yeah, he's got that locker. He's got that, that, that long ball in his locker, doesn't he, the number six? Yeah, it's Again. sprayed it out beautifully. Lovely ball yeah. to his man's advantage. Yeah, it looks like he's got a sweet left foot. Lee tries to find Lugvison and left it short. Rabin Shrestha. The more he gets on the ball, the better this Hearts team will do. And he's on there again, and he's released James. James through. I don't know if he'll have the pace to get around Mifsud, but can he release Weezy? Get the, oh, he's gone. He's gone too hard at the byline there. If he could have got that back across, would have been a very, very dangerous position. Weeks has played it out short. James just finding himself back in in his first game back in uh, in Hearts Colours and first game in the Premier League. He'll be better for this. And that's left Ludvigsen a little bit short, but the ball's gone straight back. And we're away here with Reinberg. Ball's broken for Mindel. He's dribbled in the box. Both men coming. Shot. Great save. Great Credit save. save there Great to Sobard. Now, I put it to you, would it have been better to square that up with both defenders coming in a man in the middle, or was he right to take the shot on? Again, there was, uh, it looked like Charles Zeruka was in the middle there, so he just wanted that ball to get squared across, I think. Um, I think the angle didn't, didn't really help him there, but regardless, great save by the goalkeeper. So credit Jordan Stobart there. End-to-end -end stuff here, brilliant to see. So this is Ooh with the in-swinging right-footed corner. Bit of movement from Ariku. And that's on target. Ludwigsen got it on target. Kelly tried the audacious little overhead kick that he didn't quite make a connection with. But that's going to go back to Uet on the right-hand side. Stands up Bamali. Recycles to Reinberg. Reinberg with the cross in. Tasty ball for Ludwigsen. Just over his head. And that's cleared by Karki and then away by Keane. Mifsud's misjudged the flight. But Will Reeves there to clean up, ever present. Releases Lee, who should go down the line and does to Kuwa Conan. Chips to his own advantage. Lovely control from the from the number six. And he looks to put the ball to Ludvigsen. On to Ariku. That's up in the air and will be Stobards. Santos Shrestha. Out to Nalor. Calmly done playing it back to Oshin Bamali. 
Kamali looking for a midfield option. Happy with Santos Shrestha. And Niroz Shrestha. Niroz nearly played himself into trouble there as Reinberg's got the ball. Ball forward. Just not quite to, to uh, Ludvigsen's feet. He needs a bit better service than that as Hart's retained possession here after a cheap turnover. Keane cuts the midfield out, tries to go straight to Janes, and has come back with interest. Again, just looking at the way Mendel build up, um, they're really, really good going forward in terms of combinations going forward. Um, whereas you look at Hart, they're a bit more direct. They look for that one over the top where, you know, you've got the pace of Will Reeve that can, that can actually sweep those things up. So, interesting, both ploys different, but in terms of the way they're playing, I think uh, it's a matter of time for Mendel now. I think Mendel will, you know, look to, to, to create a bit more chances in terms of the way they're playing. Yeah, and, and we spoke about that in the build-up to the last game. You know, Mindel came out on fire for a few weeks as we'll leave that QR cone into Ludvigsen. He leaves it. Thomas at the back post. Should have done better, John. That should have been one nearly had all the time in the world, and I don't think he realised it. And again, you know, we're speaking about Ludvigsen. You know, he's creating that, that, that space in that area. Again, obviously, it's gone beyond him there where we've, we've got the, the, the winger coming into it. And again, you said it before, JD. You know, he's on the six-yard. Got to do a lot better there. Yeah, he's in, Ludvigsen's presence just attracted two or three defenders there, which I'm not sure he meant to leave it. We'll give him the credit and say he did, but it opened it up for his man Kelly at the back post, who, who as he just said, should have done better, and I'm, I'm sure it'll be better for the experience. But what we're saying is this kick, uh, goal kicks lined up by Stobbard is uh, Mindel had a sort of an inconsistent run of form, and they probably looked to come out and really stamp their authority through this run of games um, because they would have earmarked this on the calendar going, we've got Darwin Hearts, Darwin Hearts, Port Darwin. We want to get back into our groove, and... Um, Darwin Hartz obviously hadn't read the script because they didn't play along as the balls flicked on from Ludvigsen, but he and Reinberg weren't on a, on, a, on a page there. But they've come out probably much better. Daniel McCormick would be much happier with the first 20 minutes tonight than the first 20 minutes on the weekend. Uh, and again, we're, we're looking at the way... It's all, at the moment, it's all Mindel. You know? they're, 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 they're trying to press, they're trying to score and so forth. Obviously, you know, they, we spoke about Hart. They, they've got that, that defensive structure where they, you know, they're resilient. And the Laws picked the pocket there, and Jane's got the ball one on one with the keeper. Credit Phil Weeks there. Credit the keeper. Difficult angle for Jane's, but credit Phil came out, made the decision, made himself big, and uh, yeah. yeah. Great save by, by Phil there. Again, you know, we're talking about uh, Hearts. They're very, very resilient. They're going to force mistakes. Unlucky there, they didn't put one away. As Bamali's got the ball. Turns it over. Kudo over the top. Kelly couldn't quite get it. Santos Shrestha with the ball in the middle. Out to Bamali. Bamali with the in-swinging left-footed cross. Good area. Runner needed to help him out. Ball with Kuhn. Wheezy's got the ball. He's got a sweet drop of the shoulder. Gets a great cross in. James just couldn't crane his neck back to get some power on that. But dangerous ball in John yeah again we're, we're talking about his pace down on the right hand side Marcus Lee's going to have a long night tonight um, but we talk about James you know you know for a tall for a tall striker he's very very agile you know and he creates he's got that sweet left foot as well so he'll create a few problems for the, the two centre backs tonight yes certainly and uh, it, interesting that on the weekend they had uh, Mamoun Diem he started on the bench uh, brings a real physical presence to the game. He's starting tonight, and you just saw there, they're happy to play more direct when he's got the ball. As That's uh, Santos Shrestha, the man I'm just talking about, got pushed off the ball, and it's a free kick to Hearts. It's a good little spell, this, for Hearts, the last three or four minutes. So as we, we, we approach the halfway point of the first half, JD, how do you see this one going? Oh, I think it's it's certainly been a, a, a much more uh, Mindle heavy contest than the, the first game, but I still feel like it's a very evenly poised one. Uh, Mindle dominating possession, but haven't really made the most of it, and, and Hearts are having good periods. I can see definitely goals for both sides, and I wouldn't be surprised to see another draw between the two. Yourself? Yeah, again, oh, you know, the Mindle, Mindle really, As, really... Uh, well done by Lee. This is Faldus Rubin Shrestha, who's fluffed his lines. He's got great technique. I expected more. JD, if you wanted a ball, you know, get cleared out on the edge of the box, if you wanted a player to be there, it would have been him. Obviously, you talk about technique. He's got a great technique. Obviously, that technique let him down in that, on that occasion. Yeah, I think that he saw the ball coming. His eyes got big, and he knows he should have done a lot, lot better than that. You've got to test the keeper if you want to score. 
good little period for Hearts last five or six minutes. So, and we never got a tip out of you, John. Um, I'm going Mindle two 0 tonight. Mindle two 0 I'm going Mindle two 0 tonight. Well, you've been pretty good on pick the score so far. So we'll see how that goes. As Nero Shrestha puts a little bit of a heavy ball through there, you can see the idea. He had two steaming forward and in one-on-one -on -one positions, and Weeks will do better with the clearance here. Just into the middle half as Ludwigson does some body work, and he'll flick this on for a Riku. There's a handball in there that I've missed somewhere, but it's a Hearts ball. We speak about how important it is taking your chances, JD, and and with a team against, uh, with a team like Hearts, if you don't take your chances, um, they will come back and they'll haunt you. And as you can see, as the game's getting on and on, Mindu will get more and more frustrated, and um, you know start to open themselves up a little bit more, which might work in favour of uh, of the Hearts team. Certainly, certainly, that was the tail of the tape on the weekend. The longer the game went without a goal, the more that you felt. Uh, Mindel's urgency increased, but Hart's confidence it came up with it. And the two came up in equal measure, which made for a fantastic game as Ariku's got the ball now and plays it into Reinberg, who did well to not be offside. He was offside. As the referee, Tim Lay, is not seeing the offside flag, which we'll come back for now. And Reinberg's asking the question, why did I need to get chopped from behind if we're offside? 10 metres further up the pitch. But that's the new interpretation. The flag's always late. Exactly. And, and, and we talk about, you know, holding your line. I mean, the biggest, the biggest disappointment for a coach is when you've got your winger who can see right down the line and he gets caught off offside. You know, we, wingers should never really get caught offside. So I think Daniel McCormack wouldn't be happy with that, you know, that decision from his player. Nero Shrestha just turned the ball over with a high press from Mindu. You could probably hear through the effects mic the call of press, and they've done it well in the area. As Nero Shrestha puts that up into the grandstand and straight back down from the crowd. Kua Conan finds a Riku. He's got time to turn. First touch let him down, John. Bamali breaking out now. He's put the ball forward to Janes, who was offside, but that's cleaned up by Reeve. Referees allowed play on at this point as we'll go back for an offside. Bit of an anti-climax at times, these offsides, isn't it? It is, and, and again, it's it's... It's one of those things where you, you know, you look at it and you say, "Geez, you know, did it have to be offside?" But um, it's part of the game. It's part of the rules, and uh, we've known that for years now. So, as Stressler again, James is playing very direct. He's certainly going away from the ball rather than towards it, and he's offside. Had it gone the other side, Moisey was definitely on, but James just straight into an offside position. And again, we speak about Mindel's defensive line. I mean, they're still playing a high line, you know, um, with the pace that. Have got and, and and when there's no pressure in that midfield, you know it should be the, the first thing the you know the back four should be doing is dropping because if there's no pressure, then um, they can play any ball through. So them staying high isn't a really good ploy at the moment. Stress has turned that over. I think that ball it has stayed in. He's turned inside. There's a few options as Stress that gets on the ball. That's Rabin. Mweezy opens it up. Ball through to Santos Stress. He'll look out the wing for Mweezy, but he's not in position. Ball forward to Niroz Shrestha, who's miles out of position as a right back. Probably needs to get on his bike and get back here because the ball's going to come back the other way with interest. As Ariku looks to release Ludvigsen. Ludvigsen's still on side down the left-hand channel. Someone's got it in the box for Mindel. There's four or five red shirts, but there's nobody for him to hit it to as Kelly finds himself in there now. Back to Ariku. Ariku chips it into an area. Good late run in from Kudo as the ball's cleared away. Kua Conan on the ball now. As you said, he's got that left foot, chips the ball in. Ariku, always Stobard's ball. Unmindle to not have runners in the box there, John. Just lacking that effort run as the ball's released from Weezy over the top, makes it a foot race. Mifsud will get there first, has to put it clear out for a throw in. Yeah, usually you get the, the runners such as uh, obviously Charles Ariku coming in from the wide, the, the wide areas, but obviously he's playing central tonight and he's the one that's delivering these balls, so it's going to be interesting how that, that ploy is tonight. And conversely, Great defensive discipline from Hearts. Got the five back there. You know, they're obviously stretched playing playing on the counter at the other end, but well done. Uh, Nero Shrestha now. Beats one, beats two. Needs to find an option. Three is beaten there. Showing Cla Charles Ariku a clean pair. He was beating the same man twice here, and Ludvigsen says, no, you won't get me twice. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Advantage played. No, no foul. Nalor with the ball. Nalor beats one. Looks inside. Couldn't beat two, but gets the ball back after the tackle. Jeez, he's quick on his feet. And leaves a bit in there on Kelly. 
We noticed this on the weekend is you'll get a yellow card early, I think, here, Nalor. He, he doesn't mind a bit of a leg in on a late challenge. Again, um, and, and, and you shouldn't really expect that because he's, he's, he's that quick. So we know Winnie is, is an exciting player, but he's just, he just lacks that, um, that discipline when it, when it comes to tackling. Yeah, he showed some real discipline certainly on Saturday. And the other one who's missing from tonight is, is Johnny Pencho. Um, gave away a, a really unnecessary yellow card to start with in kicking the ball out of Jordan Stobart's hands when he was going to kick it, uh, which he haven't been able to do for about 50 years. And, uh, and got an unnecessary yellow, which lent to a second yellow um, for, a, for a rather rash challenge, uh, which was unfortunate. He'll be missing tonight, but he'll be back with a vengeance, I'm sure, against Port Darwin on the weekend. Only the one match for, for the two yellows, but um, hopefully they don't miss him too much tonight. But it's giving Kelly the start all the same. As Bamali brings the ball back through the middle, they're not afraid to attack from the back here, Hearts. Maisie runs as he tries to get James the ball, but Reeve makes some timely intervention. Iriku on the ball. Can he find the channel? Goes himself, goes back into himself. Selfish play, but you don't mind that from your number 10. Again, you know, we're talking about, you know, Charles Aruku. If you've got someone 1v1, you know who's going to take you on. He can, um, he can create something out of nothing. And, and obviously, we just saw it there. And beat one player, but then couldn't beat the second. So, and we're going to see a lot more of that from Charles tonight, I think. So Mindel committing a lot of men forward. Here is U will take again a, a right-footed in-swinging corner from the North Crest scoreboard side of the ground. As we approach the half-hour mark, it's gone very quickly this first half, but Minda would love a goal here. As I said before, they're very good offset pieces, so we'll see how this swing, in-swinging corner comes from U. Will Reeve was at the near post, just couldn't get the, the purchase on the ball that he was after, but we'll have a second corner. They just look very, very dangerous on set pieces, Mindel. Obviously, good deliveries coming in as well. And as he places this corner down for, for Mindel, we'll take this opportunity to thank our sponsors, Hyundai, Rebel Sport, Umbro, Northcrest, NTF Constructions and Steel Line. Ball in from U. First header by Hearts and away. Stress on the ball. He says anywhere will do, but the only person there is Mifsud, who has all the time in the world to measure a pass. Reeves splits and he finds... I thought he was going to find U there, but he couldn't quite measure the pass correctly. And Keane puts it back into the midfield. A bit of aerial ping-pong. Ball controlled by Reeve, but not to his own advantage. Keen, first time ball to James. James to Mweezy, who's onside, and Wicks should beat into the ball here. Credit the keeper. Read it well, came out, claimed the ball. Yeah, just execution, let him down there. Great idea. Just had too much on it, JD. And Iriku again, back in his own half, searching for the ball. Turns it over to Santos Shrestha, to Rabin Shrestha. Back to Nero Shrestha, back to Rabin. Charles Ariku with a good tackle. He releases Reinberg, who just hasn't got the pace to foot it with Niroz Stresser, it would appear. And Niroz comes back the other way to Rabin. Channel runs on if he sees it. Looks for the switching ball across to James, and he's just raked that too far there. Sometimes the simple ball is the easier ball, John, and the channel ball was probably it from this vantage point. Yeah, I think he was expecting his nine to come short there. Ludvigsen finds Kudo. Little ball over the top. Reinberg hadn't read that one. But Kudo certainly getting further and further forward as the, as the half progresses. Obviously got license from Daniel McCormack to do that as that ball nearly beats Mifsud there. But calmly done. He puts the ball forward. Three in the area. Kudo will claim. Goes to Kuwa Konen. Finds Ludvigsen. Flick out to Reinberg. Ludvigsen looking for it back. He doesn't get it first time. Reinberg puts the ball in for Charles Ariku who couldn't quite stretch it. Athletic all the same though. And Stobart plays the ball in the middle. Stress that. There might have been a handball. was a handball. Ball away from Keane. Mifsud will claim and does. Santos stress that. To Nalor. Turnover for Ariku. Finds Kua Konan. Direct ball out to U in that right-hand channel. Ball to Ariku. First time crossing, great area. Ludvigsen had overrun it, and Ryan wasn't quite there, but that's a dangerous ball in, John. And again, we're talking about Charles Ariku on, on, on the flank. Ludvigsen turns. I think that was a shot, and yeah. it almost went for a throw. Yeah, again, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Um, we know he's got it in his locker as well, so... Again, obviously, I can just see 
Charles Uruku, you know, coming out from the right-hand flank there. That's where you want Charles to be, you know, in those wide areas, coming attacking players. And there was a good, good glimpse of it there. And with so many new faces with the number of injuries that Mindel have, there's obviously it's going to take a bit of time for those combinations to form, John, um, for the guys to know which runs that, that Charles is going to make to put that ball in. You know, you'd expect the next time that they're going to have learned from that and somebody be there to, to bury that. Nero stressed the three on him. And it comes back the other way with Reinberg. Iriku, again, time to turn. Finds Kudo. Kudo lines up the shot. Ambitious. Straight to Jordan Stobart, who parries to his own advantage. Yeah, Jordan comfortable with those ones there. Again, distance would have uh, would have tested him there. But, again, it's all Mindel at the moment. Mindel have created quite a few chances, obviously. That is a 70-metre release from Jordan Stobart to James. Doesn't quite get ahead on it, but it turns here. Can he find the law? The law's on it. Reeve and the law, huge size differential, but the law's ended up with the ball. Brings it back out. Will he recycle or try to play the ball straight back in? Recycles to Santos Shrestha. Shrestha back to Oshin Bamali. Bamali thinks back to go in the other channel. Goes back where it came from. Nearly played himself into trouble. Has played into trouble. High foot there, but well done by Ludvigsen. And that'll be a heart's throw. Bamali to the law. And they weren't on a wavelength there, Santos Shrestha and Oshin Bamali, and that's harmlessly gone out for a Mindel throw-in. Again, we haven't seen much, uh, any big scores of late. Obviously, weekend that just passed, all the games fell as draws, correct? One, all one all draws, correct, all yes, one all draws, yes. Yep. So we're not seeing a lot of goals. Do you think there's a reason for that, JD? I, I do. I, I think certainly there was some big differentials, even within teams, between players' fitness levels as they came back. Yep. Um, and I think you're seeing now that as, as players sort of the difference between the best and the worst, so to speak, in terms of fitness is, is certainly evening up, which is meaning that uh, the types of chances that are being created uh, are being closed down just as quickly. And I think the second part you'll see to that is as the players get fitter again, the finishing in the final thirds will improve as well. So I expect to see not necessarily huge score lines, but certainly the quality of chances uh, being finished improve. As the ball's gone over the top again, as Mifsa will play that directly back to Phil Weeks. Gee, Storban's got a, a big release, doesn't he, Jordan? Yeah, he does. And again, um, Mindel have got to be wary with that long ball coming across. He's got to be careful here because that's Nalor who's already on a yellow card. I don't think that was a yellow card offence, but he does need to be careful, John. Yeah, I think he's just over-enthusiastic sometimes. He tries to, to win every ball and tries to make every tackle. So he's got to be careful. He's obviously got a warning. He's obviously on a, on a yellow card. Um, and, and, and Damon wouldn't want a, a red card so early in the game. So... So Reeve plays it short to Mifsud. Hasn't got too many short options. Has to play a ball directly into his nine, which is easily cut out there by Santos Stressler. It's a line of four straight across the top from, from Mindel John. Again, you know, you're looking at your, your centre-back. You know, what you want your centre-back to do is just try, can they try and hit the nine straight away? And there's two occasions there where Mifsud's tried to do it again. He's done it first-hand before. Just try to do it again. So it's a great ploy there where he's trying to break the lines. With his just from passing instead of passing into midfield, they're playing into the forward line. Great turn there by Ludvigsen there. And well done by Nero Shrestha. That's gone out for a corner. I think Damon Order will be the happy out of the out of the two the two teams. Approaching half time. Yes, certainly. Um, hearts have come back into it the last 15 minutes. It was it was all or mainly Mindel in the opening 20, but it's it's a much more even contest now as Reinberg swings in the right-footed corner, dangerous area. Couldn't get a hand on it, but there's been a handball there by a Mindel player. Dangerous ball in, John. Yeah, yeah. They've got they've got some um, some good players on set pieces. Uh, Mindel have just haven't been able to convert so far. Both sets of subs are, are, are gone for their obligatory warm-ups. There's some danger for both sides on the bench as Mindel nearly, uh, sorry, Mindel, Hearts nearly played themselves into trouble, but a nice ball forward to the nine as you talk about breaking the lines there as uh, Rabin Stress has got the ball on Kudo. Kudo, timely. Anytime you make your man go backwards, you've done your job, John. Mweezy shows a clean pair of heels and his miffs coming across and the Mindel players have taken each other out as Mweezy's back on the ball here. 
turns it back into Rabin Shrestha. Opts not to take the first time ball, second time dangerous ball in. Phil punches, may have done better. The ball in, left hand. It's bounced around there. Didn't look uh, confident from either side with the shot or the clearance, but Bamali with the back post ball to Mweezy gets the header. So much time in such a good area. He definitely should have done better, John. Yeah, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Again, um, obviously, heading's not one of his, his great uh, in terms of what he wants to go, but great opportunity for Hart, and um, we've got a game on our hands. Yeah, it's certainly got the crowd back involved, John, as I'm sure the, the audience at home and around the world can hear the Darwin Hearts chant has gone up here. So g'day and hello to those of you listening to us uh, around this great planet of ours on the Perform Network, on FFN TV on YouTube uh, and the FFA social media channels. So we're 39 minutes in here as, as Phil Weeks in the, in the green goalkeeper's kit for Mindel Aces who are running left to right on your screens, takes the long kick. It would drop just inside of halfway here in a contest that is misjudged by you and won by Nalor, the man we talked about earlier who's on the yellow card. And Bamali wins the ball, plays back to his goalkeeper, Stobard. He's closed down by Iriku. Stobard with the release back to that same contest, which is won by Nalor to James, who's unfortunately offside. That's a lazy offside there, isn't it, John? Again... You know, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Damon Aldred on the bench there. He's not happy with that. Um, again, it's just that laziness, you know, you get sometimes from your players. And I don't want to see that again. We'll give him, we'll give him some credit as, as Hearts win the ball back here in their own half. It is his first game back. It's 40 minutes in in um, what is still good dry season conditions. It's still very hot. Perhaps he's just running out of legs a little bit. And they have got Makuju on the bench, who I'm sure will definitely see some minutes at, at the ha in the second half, but perhaps a half-time substitution. Um, and again, we spoke about how important, obviously pre-game, how important the benches are going to be tonight. And uh, as, as we spoke about it before, both benches are warming up. Um, and tonight, I think the benches are going to play a massive part. So looking forward to seeing that one, how that unravels tonight as well. Yeah, so we've talked about the, the man up the top there, James, and his likely replacement in the second, hand, uh, in the second half, Christian Makuju. On the other bench, I have spied uh, Pritt Pruz is on the card again tonight um, for his first action in, in quite a while. League's not, top scorer last season. Not a bad player to have on the bench, JD. Absolutely. Uh, and they've also got Fernando Prigic who can hit the back of the net. Uh, he started on the weekend but comes off the bench tonight. Um, but it's Mindel Ball here on the halfway line through Will Reeve. He looks over the top to Reinberg. He'll play the ball inside and look for a 1-2 from Ludvigsen. Ludvigsen delivers. Reinberg closes, drops the shoulder, but just doesn't have the speed, as I said earlier, for, for Niroz Sresta. So McCormack will need to make an adjustment there in the second half, definitely, as Mweezy and Lee battle for the ball. Mweezy's won that one there. Ball taken off his toe by Rabin Sresta. And Mweezy's down in back lane here with what looks to be a calf or Achilles problem, and hopefully the young lad's okay and it's just a boot and nothing serious. But Mifsud will play it out all the same to let the trainer come and see what's going on with young Lee. That's a great battle, that one there on the, on the right-hand side. Yeah, I think he's just had a step on him rather than any sort of uh, Achilles or calf injury. So hopefully he gets able to get up and, and carry on here, John. I think, I think we forget too that uh, Marcus Lee's only 16 years old. And then, again, another uh, you know, talent that's coming through as well. Uh, one of uh, many, obviously, we've got young Phil that's playing in goals tonight. Uh, Charles Iruku, who's 18, I think he is, 18 or 19. Uh, Phil would be close to 18, 19. So in terms of youth, there's a lot of youth players. So sportingly here, James will throw this one back to Mindel. And referee Tim just telling Weezy to leave that, such as the convention. Good on-field coaching from the referee there, John. <laughs> yeah, that's right, JD. Weeks with the release to a contest between Eriku. It beats both of them. Oh, geez, Keane's nearly taken Oshin Bamali's head off there. Bamali says, what are you doing, mate? As Kelly gets the ball in the right-hand channel here, plays to Eriku. Foul there by Keane. Kicks the ball away so there's no free kick taken quickly. Oh. 
So this will be an in-swinging ball from U. As we get towards the end of the first half, not too many stoppages. Don't imagine there's going to be too much injury time. So, Then we speak about the last five minutes before half, how important it is and how to stay switched on, JD. So danger signs, you think, here for Hearts. They're stacking the box with runners here. Mindel, there's six storming into the box. Dangerous ball in, but Stobbard, big, strong claims. That's what you want. That's what you want from your, your goalkeeper. You know, it gives you back four confidence when you get your keeper coming out and, and, and taking balls high. So And Nero stressed though, sorry, will look to spray the ball out here 30 metres, but couldn't beat Reinberg. And the ball's fallen to Ludvigsen, who will look to go back the other way through that man, Reinberg. Back to Ludvigsen. Can he take on Kaki? He's definitely got Kaki for pace, but he plays Iriku. Iriku and Ludvigsen not on the same page there. Yeah, I think uh, Iriku there was looking for it, but just, just caught him on his heels there, so... So, ball short for Keane. Eureka getting back in position to close that down, and Keane nearly trips over it, nearly played himself into trouble, but he's played himself out. Looks to take it on again. Probably just better to release that there. No point compounding the error. Yeah, exactly, and it's obviously overstretched now, so he's put his team a bit, you know, he's put his team under pressure now. Last minute of the game, middle have got a free kick here, so. They don't appear to be in any rush to take this, so it could be the last action that we see for the first half. As Reeves walking forward as though he's going to put this one in. Tan, Tanu has been relieved of his duty. Wouldn't you want Will Reeve on the end of this rather than, than taking it, John? Again, he's, uh, he does have that aerial component in his game as well. So, yeah, definitely, JD. He should be in that box there looking for that header. So he's, his game's improved out of sight the last 12 months. Let's see what he can deliver here from the set piece. Couldn't beat the first man, and that's cleared by Bamali, and Mifsud will claim... We're into injury time now at the end of the first half. Mifsud with that raking ball. Jordan coming out. Stobbard claims. Rolls the ball out to Nalor. Nalor looking to potentially break. James is in space. Ball over for James. He's miles on side. Mifsud was keeping everybody on. And Mifsud's won that, though. Timely intervention back into the midfield. Beats everybody. I don't have the lights to... Um, affecting players tonight more so than the uh, afternoon game on the weekend, but there's been a few balls in that midfield area that have been dropped, and Kudo releases Reinberg, who's in plenty of space as Stressler looks to make his ground. Cuts inside on the right. Ball forward, cut out there by Kaki. Kua Konen, ball into an area. Oh, great ball over the top as Ludvigsen breaks. Good body work. Stobart again with the fantastic work, making his body big. I thought Ludvigsen was in with the second time this half. Again, great, great save. Uh, he's having a great night under, uh, under the sticks tonight. So he came out quick. He was out in the flash too. So, you know, those little balls in behind, there's been two flicks on there where Ludvigsen's done all the body work. And you think, geez, that could be 2 0 to, Ludvig, uh, to Ludvigsen and Mindel at half time. Patient play here from Mindel. Iriku finds Kuar Konen. Ball on to Kelly. Back to Kuar Konen. Couldn't find Iriku with the return pass. Just too patient there as Rabin Shrestha brings the ball out. Tim Lay puts the whistle to his mouth, and that's half time in what's been a pretty entertaining first half here, John. It has been entertaining. End to end, as I said, Mindel, Mindel came out stronger out of both teams. Um, but as the game's gone on, uh, you know, what you expect from Hearts is, you know, they, they've got that confidence now, and this could go either way. I know I said 2-0 to Mindel, but this could go either way. Are you jumping off your horse partway through, John? <laughs> we can't be having that. Right, so it's halftime here in this Round 19 Men's Premier League clash between Darwin Hearts and Mindel Aces. As both sides exit the field for drinks, we'll have a short break and come back with the halftime show in just a minute.
and welcome back to Darwin Football Stadium here at Larrakia Park. My name's John Dean. I'm joined by Darwin's greatest footballing expert, uh, John Tamboris. And John, exciting first half. Uh, again, very exciting. Um, uh, first 15, 20 minutes, it looked like it was all Mindel and it looked like, it looked like Mindel was going to run away with it. But again, um, some, obviously the goalkeepers stood, stood tall for, the heart, for Hearts tonight. Um, their back four have stood well. And, and just looking at the game, as it's going on, you can see Mus- uh, Mindel are getting more and more frustrated. So, and, and Hearts have come into the game, so I'm looking forward to seeing the, uh, what's, what's going to happen in the next half. Yeah, certainly Jordan Stobbard, the Hearts goalkeeper, has been the busier of the two keepers. Two fans, sensational saves from him. Uh, you think he's going to have more work in the second half here, John? I think he is. Again, I uh, just, just listening to uh, Daniel McCormack's uh, halftime talk, um, he was obviously happy with what, what, what he saw in the, in, the, in the first half. Obviously, just putting chances away, you know, that was a clear message. Let's, get, let's put a couple away. Uh, we're creating chances, but obviously we're not putting them away. So, again, I'm, I'm expecting a bit more from Mindel, and we, we spoke about it before, how important this game is for Mindel. They win tonight, they go top of the ladder. So, I'm looking at all-out attack from Mindel second half. Yeah, top of the league, halfway through the season. This is their 10th game. Uh, big, big incentive for them to play for. And at the other end, uh, Coach Aldrit, uh, what would he be saying to his players at this point? Again, he, he was quite happy. Um, obviously, as the game went on, you could see they, they got more and more confidence. Um, and they they frustrated Mindel. So they know they're in this game. And they get one, it could be it could be a good game. So we're looking at both teams now. I think Damon Aldrit, looking at both camps, Damon Aldrit's the happiest out of both camps. Awesome. And uh, certainly some quality on both benches tonight. Are we expecting to see some changes early in the second half or, or close to the hour mark? You'd, you'd expect it. Again, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of mileage in, in the legs for most of these players, obviously with backup games, midweek games, and, and obviously games on the weekend. So um, I think he was saying, you know, uh, three or four games in eight days or so, uh, and something. So, you know, when you look at that, we, we spoke about it before, how important the bench is going to be tonight, the players coming off the bench. So both clubs, uh, both teams have got... Um, good players on the bench that can make a difference. Looking forward to seeing them come on in the second half. Brilliant. Well, we'll be back in just a moment with the second half here from Darwin Football Stadium, Larrakia Park. And welcome back to Darwin Football Stadium here at Larrakia Park as we have a bit of a false start with the kickoff and it's Minder Laces in their away black kit with the yellow, stri- uh, yellow socks running from left to right on your TVs here in the second half while Darwin Hearts in their traditional red kit, blue shorts and blue socks running right to left. So nil all at half time, John. Um, bit of a patient start as the ball breaks here. Ludvigsen, good strength work to win the ball there but Keane able to recover for his side and clear the ball out into an area. Doesn't appear to be any changes from either side at half-time half time from what we can see. As Nero Stressler wins that, but ball's won again in the middle, and Kuwa Conan will win this before sending it. Oh, no, he's turned back into the middle. Back out to Reinberg on that left-hand side. Cheeky ball over, looking for Kuwa Conan. Couldn't quite find him, and that's that's claimed by Stobbard. They've, they've looked at that all night tonight, you know, that, that, that cheeky one over the over the top there just to try and catch the, the back four. But again, Stobbard's been alert to it and, and off his line in a flash. And uh, ball to James, who's put the ball down the channel for Nalor, but comfortably covered by U. That would have been a dangerous ball if they were on the same wavelength there, John. Again, uh, we, we know how quick he is, um, but again, well, well covered there by the, the Mindelaces right back. Yeah, just a, a little bit flat-footed, but uh, I think if that opportunity presents itself again, we could see a different result down that left-hand channel. So we'll keep an eye on that here on the, the second half. As a Shimba Marley's got the ball, and he's pointing in for the box as he wants to cross it in and does, but comfortably cut out by Mifsud. Ball falls to Shrestha. Back to Bamali. Bamali beats the first man, still wins it. Kelly gets the ball to Nalor. Nalor turns, turns, turns. Back to James. James to his own advantage. Three on one. Ball goes down. All clean. Kudo comes away with it, but only as far as Wheezy 
Mweezy now drops the shoulder. Ball back in. Mifsud, geez, that was a, a bit scrappy from Mindel in there. And it's come back again with interest. And I think Iriku could, could find that he's given away a foul here. And I'm mistaken with that earlier call that there's been no substitutes. No substitutes from Mindel, but there is one substitute that's been made by Hearts. And it's the number 13 that's come on, Arjun Padel. And it appears that he's come on for Mamoun Diem. So 45 minutes work for Diem. And he's been replaced at the start of this second half by Padel. So who we got over the board, JD? We've got... Rabin Shrestha. Again, I fancy him from... This is his range. Yeah, it is. This is definitely his range. He looks confident. Uh, James is also standing over it, although one might suggest that James's left foot might be better served in the box, but Rabin looks confident, and he's already wasted one, so hopefully he does better here as he looks to beat the wall. Which it's a big wall, too, from Mindel. Whistle from the referee. Rabin Shrestha steps forward, beats the wall, comfortably into the arms of the keeper. Went for placement, not so much power there, John. Again, uh, we, we, we know he's got a great technique, but just, just hit the goalkeeper on that occasion. So, And Pudel showing straight away the work right there as we've got an injured player in back play for Hearts, but Nero Shrestha closing down Reinberg. Good physical tussle. A little nutmeg there from Reinberg. That's a couple of dollars for Shrestler into the kitty. Charles Ariku opens the shoulder. Great tackle there. Kua Conan, lovely step overs. Releases the ball down to Kelly. Kelly can't quite control it. That'll be a Hearts throw as Coach Aldrich there. There's, this appears to be quite a serious injury here for Hearts. He, he hasn't moved. Yeah, he's obviously singling out that he needs to be subbed off here. Hopefully it's not too serious. Hopefully the medic will give us a bit more insight than that. And is it Rabin Shrestha that's on the ground? It looked fairly innocuous. It didn't appear to be too much in it, but I'm, I'm very confident that it is Rabin Shrestha that's on the, crowd, on is, the ground. It, and it is, it is and you'll see probably the biggest cheer of the night here for, uh, for the trainer that comes on for Hearts. But the, the crowd's either still at the canteen or they haven't noticed because usually uh, that is the biggest, yeah. biggest cheer of the night for, for David when he comes on. He is a crowd favourite. So as he's seen to by the trainer here, we'll take the opportunity to quickly thank our sponsors, Hyundai, long-term partners of football in this country, uh, Rebel Sport, Umbro, Northcrest, as you can probably see the Northcrest scoreboard there in the background, uh, NTF Construction Supplies and Steel Line. It's a, a beautiful Tuesday evening. Love some midweek football. Been a bit less, bit let down by the fact we haven't had midweek football yet in the season. Usually we would have played a couple of FFA Cup fixtures to this point um, to moving towards a round of 32. Hopefully that can get on a little bit later in the season, John, with some more midweek action. Again, um, you know, even when you're playing the game, you know, you're looking forward to midweek games because you didn't train much. You just obviously played a game, prepared for the next game, played a game, prepared for the next game. So... I mean, and that, that whole process is as, as how, how, do you, how you look after your body and, 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 and treat your body to get it right for, for match day. So, um, very, very interesting six weeks we've got ahead of us. Uh, obviously, we're in week two of, of the six. So, uh, and we know how important the, the benches are going to play and, and, the, and the squad, not so much the starting 11 is going to play. So, be a very, very interesting six weeks. Yeah, and it's a little coincidence of the draw that just so happened as we, we have four rounds uh, with the six-team competition, four full rounds to play, that it happened to be double-ups for Port Darwin and Hellenic and now double-ups for uh, Mindel and Hearts. And, and next week we'll see Kazarina as a, a bit of a last shot there from Kuar Conan goes out for a goal kick. Um, we'll see uh, Azuri and Kazarina go at it. Um, and then we start again the, the match-ups uh, for the second round, round 20 of our, our uh, make-up games. Um, that they happen to be playing each other, but it's a nice little twist to it when you play teams so quickly uh, in succession with only the three-day break. It's a real chess match rather than checkers, John. Well, again, we're just uh, just just looking on that, JD. We've just got a call from the the physio. It doesn't looks like it doesn't look like like Shrethman's going to continue. Um, he's hobbling around on the sideline there. 
So Hart's playing with 10 men at the moment. Ball out to Bamali on the near side. He looks to release Nalor, but there's a foul that I've missed there, but Hart's ball all the same. Bamali stands over this. Kelly back well more than his 10. Long ball forward from to Nalor. One by Reeve. Up in the air by Padel. James is offside, but Moise is definitely on. Weeks has come, but it's gone away from him. In the back of Lee, round Lee. Wins the ball there, Moise. Can he get across? Does Nalor shot. Timely intervention from Reeve. Jeez, that's good defending, John. Yeah, great defending. Uh, put his body on the line there. Great block from uh, young Will Reeve there. And he just seems to be doing that more and more this season. I think he's, he's sort of turned himself into Mindel's first choice centre-back over the last 12 months. He has, and um, he's had a break breakout season this year just watching the way he's played his confidence he's uh he's uh he's got that nitty-gritty thing about him as well which which we want in center halves but he's a ball playing center half as well he likes to put the ball down and looks to play so one for the future dd that's for sure yeah when we don't want to embarrass the kid but we, we did talk about uh off camera um in a three nil win um he was probably if not best on one of the best on for the darwin select oh, under 23 side me, as a center best, half yeah he was my best on ground that night and who has got the ball now in the right channel Looks forward to Kelly. Kelly sees a recoup, but goes over the top to Ludvigsen. Handball there from Ludvigsen. Unfortunate because he played himself into a good position. Um, ball to hand, but that's always given as a handball these days, particularly in such an attacking position. So it will be the number nine coming on the man I spoke about, Christian Mikuju. Uh, a little bit earlier than anticipated and not in the position perhaps that we expected as he's coming on for Rabin Stressler, who's limping his way back around to the bench now, unfortunately unable to continue here tonight. And I think he's going to drop into that number 10 role, uh, leaving James up top. But he's got pace and some silky smooth uh, feet as well. So look to him to get on the ball early as he gets the ball now, plays it to his own advantage and looks to turn and play forward. Turns the ball over, Riku looks to Ludvigsen. So much space in the midfield. It's opened up really early here. So much time for Mindel. As Kua Konen looks to play the ball back out left to Reinberg. Controls forward. Hasn't got the pace for, for Shrestha, but manages to have the strength. And that's gone out. I think you'll find that's a goal kick. It's been a great battle, those two tonight. Um, again, uh, Shrestha is so quick and versatile. Yeah, highlight of the night for me on Saturday was actually Nero Shrestha versus Charles Ariku. Just both of them so evenly matched for speed. Uh, Charles Ariku probably a little bit stronger, but Shrestha a little bit better with the feet. It was just a ding-dong battle. They both went at it all night, which is what you want to see. Um, obviously a different matchup tonight. It's pure speed versus uh, Reinberg, who's, who's just that, that bit stronger. Yep. Um, but uh, we, we talked about the fact that McCormack might make a change there. He hasn't. He's left at play. So he's obviously happy with what he's seeing from his man on that left-hand channel. Um, will we see him start to go to the bench early, or will he wait till well after the hour mark, John? I think, um, I think again, during his half-time team talk, he was obviously getting players ready. So I wouldn't be surprised. We it's might see a few players make... Um, making an entry in in the near future so kudo showing his decades of football experience there he knew he wasn't going to be able to get there with speed against Shrestha put his body between himself and the ball and won a free kick as Nero just couldn't help himself but make a, a challenge through the back there so Reinberg telling Mifsud that I'll take this one thank you very much Mifsud being sent back to his Centre back position. As the referee walks out the two man hearts wall. So this you're expecting an in swinging free kick here from from the German. Nice free kick in dangerous area. I've beaten everybody. Oh timely intervention from Keane. It's just missed header at the near post. A second header nearly missed there. Mindel certainly had the opportunity to toe poke at home, but Keane with the timely sliding intervention has saved Hart's bacon there as Ludvigsen looks to release again through the man that put that ball in. Kua Konen, the Estonian, plays it back to the German. Again, the same man, back heel to Kua Konen. Nice ball in, back stick. Eriku rises, ball beats Kudo. Kelly's got the ball now here at the edge of the 18-yard box. Oshin Bamali beaten there. Kelly in, nice ball across. Ludvigsen couldn't get a toe on it. Taiki Kudo, first time ball, goes backwards, wrong direction. Ooh, looking over his shoulder, and it's Nalor. Nalor over the top to his own advantage. Needs to stay out of it here, James. 
You know, I thought James was on side, you know, but if Nalor had have told him to stay out of it, he was away. And there was nobody near him. And he's explaining to him right now, he's exactly saying exactly what he, we just spoke about. Um, geez, he's got a lot of pace on him, hasn't he? So, so dangerous. Another player for Hearts down there. I'm not sure if that's Nero Shrestha clutching at his ribs in back play, but they've played on. Ball in from Mindel. Dangerous. Ludvigsen in so much space, and he just side puts it home underneath Jordan Stobbard. I think he may have collected Stobbard on the way through as referee Ryan has flagged. I'm not sure what he's flagged for. I'm not sure if the referee will come and have a chat with him or if they're just marking down that it's 1-0 in the 58th minute with a goal to the league's third top scorer, Tavian Ludvigsen, his eighth of the season. Yeah, again, Kelly, great, great, great run down the line, great ball in. And that's what you want. Ludvigsen, good finish. He's had a few chances tonight, JD. Yeah, that could comfortably have been his third goal, but he, he finished that one with a plum there. Right foot, side foot, underneath Stobbard. And as we've said, Nero Schrestler down there for Hearts. He'll be coming seen to by the trainer now, and they may be forced to make their secondary, uh, second injury substitution here within the hour. Hopefully he's okay too, JD. He's, it'd be a big loss if, if Neroys went off tonight. And after such dogged defending from the Hearts for the first near hour of this match, that was such a simple goal. Um, you know, it could have come a little bit earlier with the balls over the top, but uh, the, the nutmeg from Kelly there on uh, Oshin Bamali, ball back across, and it was just oh so simple for Tavian Ludvigsen. Now, he'll take those all day long. Yeah, and again, we, we, we spoke about him, how, how many chances he's had tonight. And he's deserved it. Let's be honest, he's, um, he's created a few chances. He's missed a few chances. He's getting in the right places. Obviously, you know, Jordan's had a great night under the sticks tonight, uh, but just couldn't keep him out on that, on that occasion. And being the noted striker that you are, John, um, that one fell to, to Ludvigsen there. Obviously, Stobbard's a, a big man. Are you looking to play underneath the keeper there? Is that is that a deliberate ploy rather than necessarily looking for, for corners? Just play it so that he, he can't get down, given well, his size? We actually, um, during the halftime talk, um, Daniel McCormack was actually addressing the players, saying, look, anything high or above waist, um, uh, Jordan, that's one of Jordan's strengths. You know, that's what he wants. So, obviously, you know, the finish there was low, low and in the corner, so... And, and the law, again, showing... All his enthusiasm there, just a little bit too enthusiastic giving away the foul. But if you coach Aldred here, you're really looking for a reaction from the Hearts players. They've gone a goal down. You want to see them respond and try and come back with one of their own in these next five minutes, John? Exactly, JD. Um, he's obviously looking for a response now. Dangerous ball in. No one attacking that far post. As Kuakonen has shown Jordan Stobbard that uh, they can do hip and shoulders in Estonia too. That's two big men coming together there. Yeah, class of the Titans there, wasn't it? Lee takes it first time to Ludvigsen. He'll be buoyed by that goal. Forward to Keane. James is on side. All over the back there of, of Will Reeve. Just a little bit too enthusiastic there from James as well. Reeve releases early to Kuakonen. He plays to Reinberg. Reinberg looks and turns inside. He's got a nice turn. He knows shrester has got him for pace, but he's turned him well. Ball over. Well done by Bamali. Taiki Kudo looks up, tries to measure across into the area. Geez, that's a nice ball. Ludvigsen didn't miss it by much, an inch maybe, but uh, Stobart certainly was not getting there on the full. Great ball in from Kudo. As okay. they've turned the ball over again here, Hearts, Kua Konen. Turns, beats one, beats two, releases back to Kudo. Kudo's everywhere. Geez, he's got a motor. Again, it doesn't really show his age, does it? I think he's um, he's 44 years old. Yeah, 40, 40, I think it might be 46. I'll have a quick look through our notes here. 43 years. Sorry, I've Great. sold him short. They're 43 years young. Great to see him still playing this beautiful game. As Nalor's kicked that straight into Will Reeve. Will Reeve's worn it from about four inches, but I think the referee's deemed that it's a dangerous play with the high foot. No, throw in to Iriku. Bit too much muscle there from Charles. So Hearts haven't come out of the blocks immediately following that goal with a lift of intensity. Hopefully they, they, they can bring one here, John. Again, we're, we're looking for a response from the hard players. So, again, they're still chirping away. They're still... 
Obviously, Damon on the, on the touchline there, still chirping away at his players. He knows one goal in. They get a goal back here, and they're, and they're back into it. So, game's not lost yet. Oh, nice ball through from Weezy. And that's what Makuja can do. Uh, he's, he's got all the tricks. That was a nice ball through. Back heel around the corner, and it's beaten two players. Uh, given the opportunity again, I think uh, Moise might have anticipated and made the run as Nero Shrestha takes the throw here in front of the North Crest scoreboard as we come into the 63rd minute of this second half. Round 19 clash between Darwin Hearts and Mindel Aces. Out again there by Lee. Nice 20 metre pickup for Darwin Hearts. Mindel certainly the more vocal of the two sides. You can hear some of the noise on the pitch coming through. Plenty of communication between their players. No real obvious uh, direction at the moment from Hearts, I guess, from their players, John, from what we can hear of our p p position up here on the, yeah, exactly, in the grandstand. They exactly. They've, they've, lost a bit of, they, they've lost a bit of their groove since they've conceded that goal. You can see they've, um, you know, in terms of confidence, uh, they're not as confident as, as they were. Well done, Phil, there. Speaking of confidence, nice confident take there from Phil Weeks from the overhead cross that's come in from the law there. Phil with a... 35 metre release bounces on the halfway line. Taken by Ludvigsen. The flick on for Ariku, not anticipated. Taken by Kaki. Back to Stobart. He'll look to go back to Kaki. Nice release there. Ball to look to play Stressler, but nicely closed down there from Rydberg. That's what you want from your 7, 9, and 11. Bit of defending from the front. That'll really lift the, the Mindel players, even though it's gone out for a goal kick. They'll appreciate that from their front three. And, and, they've, and they've been doing it all game, to be honest, JD. They've been trying to press and trying to win the ball high in their attacking third and obviously trying to transition straight into attacking opportunity. So you can see um, it's a ploy that Daniel McCormack's used um, you know, quite often uh, during the year, and it's worked for him as well. So this is the substitute Patel in a physical battle with Kuar Conan, who's pulled back on him there. Probably advantage for Hearts. Referee hasn't seen it that way. Kelly plays to Ooh. Ooh with the fancy back heel back to Kelly. All play on, says the referee. Kuar Conan chipped over for Ariku. Ball finds Ariku. Couldn't control it advantage of the first time. Played it to his own shot. Scuffed at that, really. And Oshin Bamali will win the ball. Has beaten Kelly to Keane. Keane's toe poked that away into the midfield. That'll be taken by, by the middle player, but ball over the top by Majewski. High fit from both. Play on. Ball taken by Kudu, calmly in the area. Played it forward for Erika, who didn't anticipate it. James is on side. Eyes only for the front. Lee's cleaned it up. Jesus quick Nalor. He's steaming in on the goalkeeper here. Tried to make himself big and put, put young Phil off, and he hasn't. Ball over the top from... Shrestha there. Just puts a foot on it calmly, Kua Conan. All the experience in the young man coming out now. Reinberg cuts back in. He loves to cut in on that right foot. Looking for a pass. Beats two. Bought down there. Unnecessary foul. Charles Ariku looks to play quickly. Wasn't quite on the spot, but referee says, OK. Ludvigsen tees it up from 25 out. All the confidence of that goal being shown there. I think that was headed into the car park. All the same, though, John. Kua Conan out left to Kudo. Kudo, lovely ball to Ariku, drops it onto his left foot, heavy first touch, crosses it back post to Livingston, the target man, but Bamali's done well. Probably a better cross needed there. Yeah, Ariku's better, certainly got a better cross in his locker. Better cross needed there, and again, you can see Mindor trying to force that second goal, they're trying to get that second goal. As Moise's on a 25-metre run with timely intervention from Reeve. Showed quicker wheels than I thought he had there. Gravity's ground well. Yeah, he's a... Uh... You know, he's, he's very, very quick over that, that 10 metre dash. He's very, very quick. So Moise to James. Little flick on into an area. Nobody attacking it for Hearts, but that's the substitute with four to James. He's offside, unfortunately. Won't count, but he's missed the target regardless. Got a great opportunity there. Just needed to time his run. It's end to end. This is what you want. Yeah, Santos stressed, though. Showed no backward step there. Two Mindel players probably had the right to win the ball, but he said, no, thank you very much, I'll take it. Played the ball to James, who was in a good area. James might be half a metre, a metre offside. Unfortunate, but the offside flag has saved his blushes there because he didn't hit the target. But that's brought the Darwin Hearts fans back into the game, John, as you can hear the chant coming up in the background. That's what you want. The crowd really lifts them. Um, and they need that at this point. You just feel they've, they've turned a little bit flat. They need a real pick-me-up, and, and this could be exactly what they need. Yeah, that, that's a, that 12th player, as we speak, speak about so often.
So U loves a back heel with that right foot. Plays it back to Kuakonen. He's trying to measure a pass, looking for options. No one's short, so he goes to Kelly. Kelly back to U. He's looking forward. Finds Ludvigsen. Ludvigsen tries to flick it. Played it into his own hand, but nothing seen by the officiating crew. Back to U. Kuakonen, left foot over the top there to Reinberg. Takes one touch control. Drops the shoulder on Shrestha. Strong work by Shrestha. He's played well all night in that position. He looks to release now. Ball forward to Nalor. Nalor just couldn't get there as timely intervention by Lee. Yeah, we're six, 67 minutes in at the moment. And, you know, if you're going to say who my best best player on the pitch is, it's, he's going to come from the lose or not the losing team, the team that's um, down at the moment. I mean, Nero Schmidt has just been outstanding tonight on the right on the right hand side. And that that man that you've uh, you're talking about, John, just been brought down by his opposite number, Charles Ariku. Um, he'll be fine. He'll get up. It just burns those ones. He's been absolutely outstanding, JD. Would you agree? God, completely. And uh, I spoke about it in the game on Saturday with with uh, Lewis Bunton, who coached him in the under twenty three side this year. And he's just a pleasure to coach. Uh, there's so many boys in that team that are, but he's certainly one of them. They just they, they want to learn. They're, they're hungry to learn. And when you put players of that quality together in that environment, it's just it's such a positive uh, experience for everyone involved, particularly when they want to do that. As a ball drops here, Mindel, classy classy clearance there by Reeve. Timely, needed. Uh, yeah, just, just had to clear the lines there. But again, going into James as well, that aerial route. It's quite a tall man. We spoke about it. Expecting a bit more of this from Hart. So Nalor puts it down, the 11. This will be a right-footed in-swinging corner from this grandstand side here at Darwin Football Stadium. Goes near, nobody there, but he has a chance to win the ball back. Falls to Kuakonen, who puts it forward. Ariku's not an option there. Keen, I think that may have been a shot from 35 out. Kudo pushed off the ball there. And AR2 Albert Kraus flags for a free kick. That was just strong work, wasn't it, John? It was. As Uriku skips forward for Shrestha. Uriku looking to measure across here. Drops onto his right foot. No, this will be a shot. He's, oh, he's played it back to Ludvigsen. Ludvigsen tried to almost pass that in the back of the net. I don't think they're on a wavelength there. Uriku looked like he was going to drive. Cut it back on the left. Cut it back to his own advantage. Looked like he was trying to shoot. And Ludvigsen took it off his toe there, John. Um, it's so unlike Charles Uriku on the six yard, you know, to lay it off for someone. Um, you, you normally expect him to pull the trigger there. So... Yeah, interesting one, that one. And, and you can't really fold Ludvigsen either. He is the hot foot. He has scored tonight. He's high on confidence. He's going to want the shot. But uh, both of them wanted it, and, and neither of them ended up taking it with any real conviction as we have the in-swinging corner here from Reinberg. Good area. Bamali out to meet it. Reinberg gets there again. First time, little dink in with the left foot. Flick on from Ludvigsen, and that's another goal. No power on that. That was all placement. He knew Jordan Stobard was coming. A little flick on with the head, and it's just trickled in the far side. You picked 2 0, John, and that's the scoreline we've got at the moment. Again, JD, we spoke about um, Ludvigsen. You know, he's, he, he could have had a hat trick tonight, to be honest. Uh, he's obviously one goal off that at the moment, so he can still get it. But, um, you know, just that, uh, that predatory instinct, you know, that, you know, to get in front of his man, to get that flick on and get yeah, a classy goal, great goal. Well, it's his, it's his ninth goal of the season. Second tonight, as you say, he could still beat double figures by the end of tonight. Um, you look for something from your captain when you give him the armband. Daniel McCormack, stroke of genius? Uh, again, you know, we, we, I must say, yeah, stroke of genius. Uh, you know, he's obviously new player to the club. Um, hasn't played for a while, as we spoke about pre-match. So, see him back here, back in down, scoring goals. You know, this is what you want. So we're talking about the Welsh striker, Tavian Ludvigsen, for, for those watching around Australia and around the world, as Kelly wins the ball there and it finds its way to Kuakun and the Estonian. Back to U, former Bentley Greens man in the NPL 1 down in Victoria. Intervention there from the heart. Again, Kuakun and strong with those second balls. Iriku tries to flick it forward to Ludvigsen, but couldn't quite pick him out. So have a heart's throw here. Again, the Mindel laces as his players, uh, you know, their tails up. You can see confidence. Back flick, flicks and... And he's beat him for speed here. Comes in. Willie looked to shoot. Squares it up. Three in the middle. Nalor couldn't get there. Steaming at the back post is a Shimbamali. Only got a left foot. 
and he skied it. No right footer, Shimba Marley. Tried to play it back onto his left, and that's probably why he's playing at the back, John. Yeah, now look, he'll be disappointed with that effort, but um, again, great opportunity for Haas to get, to get one back there, so... But the pace of the number nine there for for, uh, for the Hearts is... Lightning. Oh, lightning. He's lightning, isn't lightning. he? Lightning. Yeah. Him and, and Wheezy and Allure, the three of them there working off James. There's so many opportunities. I, I'm going to tell you, I, I think this game is far from over at 2-0 with their pace as that ball's just evaded Ariku and some tidy work done by Kaki as well with the shoulder. So Stobard looks for the long release. This will travel all of 60. Kudo's under it and so is Nalor. It beats Kudo over Nalor and will be cleaned up by Mifsud. Heads the ball out to the left to Lee. And that'll trickle out there for a Darwin Hearts throw. So Bamali, the man we were just talking about, who had the opportunity to peg one back for Hearts here, looking to take the throw. Goes long down the line to James. One by Kudo. And calmly done by Kudo as that trickles out for a goal kick. So you haven't done one of these men's Premier League games for a few weeks, John, but we do talk a lot during the week, and you're very good at this pick-the-score business. Um, I'm going to ask you, uh, we've got a number of games coming up this weekend. We'll work our way through all three through the call. Is it too early in the week to get a tip? Uh, it is too early, JD. Um, but again, during the week, um, we'll touch base during the week, and I'll, I'll give you my thoughts. And <laughs> So there's a foul here as Hearts will take the free kick about 10 metres into their attacking half. Ludvigsen not back the required 10 at the moment, but that won't be a, a problem as this ball will be swung out to the right-hand side and into an area that James is occupying at the moment. So Keane, to that man I'm talking about, James. Little flick on header, over. Just didn't have, didn't have the same luck that Ludvigsen did there. That was certainly what the intention was, a little flick on over the keeper. Can it look like uh, young, uh, young Will was caught in no man's land there for a minute? Uh, lucky the header just didn't have that sting on it. So Mweezy's on the ball. He plays it through to that man we talked about before, Makuju. Just not quite able to control it to his advantage, and it'll be a throw to Mindel deep in their own corner. He, Another he... interesting fact is um, Daniel McCormack still hasn't gone to his bench. Obviously, it's in up. Um, it uh, still hasn't gone to his bench there. Well, a question for you with your coaching hat on. You've got Pritt Pruz on the bench there. Obviously, he's had a, a plethora of injuries, and we'll come back to that in just a second, John. You cannot pick the ball up if it's thrown to you from a throw-in, which Phil Weeks is obviously not familiar with that rule. So this will be a free kick inside the area for Darwin Hearts. I think, um, yeah, just a lapse in concentration. Now, obviously, young young Phil, you know, we know he's young, but, um, yeah, just switched off there for a minute and... So if I'm not mistaken, this is an indirect free kick inside the area, so must be touched by somebody. It can't be a direct shot. We'll see if that's the signal from the referee. Just waiting for the hand to go up. Yeah, so he's, the hand hasn't gone up. He is giving the two fingers, which I think he's saying it has to be two people to touch it. Yes, the hand's gone up. It is an indirect free kick. So Nalor, can you pick somebody out here? He's got Mweezy, James, Makuju, and Padel at the back. The ball's gone back. Bamali with a left foot. There's not been a whistle. Well, they've given away the game here, Hearts. So question for you, John. Do they go the same routine again, or do they change it up? Um, I think they're going to go the same routine. JD. So Nalor standing over it again. Maybe not. He's made a fool of you and gone over. James in a good area. Back kick. Oh, timely intervention. I think it was Matthew Miff stood on the line. Um, the, the overhead kick not hit with any real venom, just trying to get it in an area. But uh, they looked at sixes and sevens there at the back in the middle. They did. And that's gone harmlessly out for a goal kick. So, no sooner have you said it, but Daniel McCormack's gone to his bench. The question I was going to ask you was, you've got Pritt Pruz. He's had a number of injuries so far this season, a vital cog for them up top, um, despite the acquisition of, of Tavian Ludvigsen, who spent the preseason at Port Darwin. But do you risk a player like Pritt Pruz with a scoreline at 2-0 and give him 15 minutes to get some minutes in the legs, or uh, do, you, do you wrap him in cotton no, wool? No, 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 100%. Uh, we spoke about it. He hasn't had much game time. 
You know, he's had an injury. Get him out there. You need him to get him match fit. You've got to get him match sharp. Um, my ploy was to put him on, give him 15 minutes. Could, could snare you a goal as well. So, you know, minutes are, are crucial, you know, this time of the year. So it's Prigic that's come on for, uh, for Reinberg being replaced and his first intervention is to flick the ball forward there for Thomas who's tried to pick out Charles Eric who just couldn't find that final ball. Thomas still on the ball, nice step over. Tried to beat three, couldn't beat the third. Prigic to Kuakunen. Ball forward to Lee. Lee telling Eriku to run in the channel, he does. Your first time ball in with the left foot. Nice area. Ludvigsen had pulled back that time rather than attacking that near post. Um, just inconsistent runs, but they're good balls in from Ariku. Prigic finds that man Ariku again. Couldn't control it to his own advantage, and he's given away a goal kick. I think there'll be more movement on the Mindel bench here. Um, Cole McGowan got some minutes on, uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, Tuesday night, on Saturday night, I should say. Tonight's Tuesday night. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him come on uh, at some point. Where I'm not 100% sure, whether it's Kelly... Uh, who's, who's had a good, I think it's his starting debut tonight, the number five, young Kelly. Uh, that could be the end of his night, potentially. He's had a good 78 minutes thus far. Um, introduction to the top grade. But uh, is, that, is that what you see as well, John? Uh, again, I haven't seen who's coming on, but again, Kelly's been quite impressive out on the right-hand side tonight. Obviously setting up the first goal, uh, which is a great confidence booster for him. But um, looks like he'll be... Uh, well, I'm, I'm half right. It is that man, Colm, coming on. Uh, it's Mario Kuakunen who's coming off, but Kelly's coming off saying, I'm done. He wants out. Uh, but he's not the man that's being replaced, John. Yeah, look, Kuakunen, great shift from Kuakunen tonight. Um, again, every time he got the ball in the middle of the park, he just got things going for him. He's basically that player that just sits in front of the back four and just distributes. So a good shift from him tonight, the Estonian. So he's given these supporters a round of applause as Hearts have the ball in their own half. Ten minutes to go here. Uh, do you change the formation, John? Do you go three at the back and start chasing harder, or is it just an even more direct approach from Hearts at this point? Uh, again, I, I think um, they might go a little bit more direct, for, especially the last ten minutes. But, um, again, we know how important this game is for them tonight, so won't be surprised if um, Damon Audrett, who's a very experienced coach, changes it up and, and really goes for it. So Mwizi fighting a losing battle there against three in the midfield, and Prigic brings it away. He'll do well to release Ariku, just couldn't quite get the toe on the ball. Ariku's ended up with it regardless. He's put the ball forward, but Padel pressuring. Kelly's on the ball, tired legs from Kelly. You could see that he wanted to come off before, and that, that touch probably explains why. Um, had an opportunity, just couldn't take advantage. Uh, it's good to see, uh, obviously, Charles Ariku going out on the left-hand side. So again... And I think at this stage of his career, that's probably his preferred position, John. Yeah, exactly. He, um, he, every time he plays out on the wing, you know, we, we spoke about space. He needs space. And if he's got space in that, on, that, on those wide areas, um, he'll hurt teams. So Mweezy turns himself out of trouble down the line. Beats too well. Body checked, but no foul. McGowan, first, first intervention as the ball's cleared there by Santos Stresta. Over Ludvigsen, five in there, but he still gets to the ball first. Good body work there. Too strong, though, says AR1 Ryan. There's a clap of hands, and they're away. Hearts running to get the ball here to take this free kick, but no real sense of urgency. And young Kelly will be thanking this. He's sucking in the big ones there, looking at his coach McCormack saying, get me off. As the ball goes out to the right-hand side here through Kharki. Looks back into the middle, no real options, just puts a foot on it and goes back to the keeper in Stobard. You can hear the calls of press coming from Mindel, but the intensity's gone out of that press here as they enter the last 10 minutes with a two-goal lead as the ball goes directly forward from keeper to James. Nice play. Ball forward. There's a channeled run here from Bamali. He's still going after 81 minutes. Looks to play the ball back to Nalor. Nalor's on it, lightning the law. That's a foul there. Just not quite with the speed of the game since he's come on there. And... Uh, particularly with Nalor, he's very, very quick, John. I think this will be the time that we see that intervention. So there's two substitutions coming. You're right there. Tavian Ludvigsen is coming off for Prit Prus to come on. So he's not getting the opportunity to become the eighth hat-trick of the season in this Darwin Men's Premier League, uh, John. And he'll pass the armband on. And Kelly's going to have to remain out there a little bit longer. Yeah, not a bad sub to make um, if, you're, if you're Daniel McCormack. And, again, we talk about the firepower that he's got. 
And um, obviously with a lot of players injured as well still to come into this team. So, you know, when those players are ready, fit and ready, um, there's going to be competitions for places is what you want. But um, I can see them being, uh, you know, coming home strong in the, in the second part of the season. And it took three men to put that armband on. I don't think his biceps are that big. They're certainly not as big as yours, John. <laughs> so the ball's going to be swung in here by Strestler. Stepped over. Bamali swings it in. Left foot near post. Kudo. Timely intervention, but nearly an own goal. And he's been everywhere tonight, Kudo, hasn't he? Um, again, you know, we're talking about our best on grounds. For Mendel, for me, Min, in, in terms, I know Ludwigsen scored two tonight, but he's been everywhere tonight. So rolling the dice here, Coach Damon Aldrett. Two changes coming. We'll let you know who they are when they come on. But it's the number eight, Sajal Strasta, coming on, as well as the number three, Kishal Nepal, and the men exiting the field. It's Nalor, the goal scoring from the weekend, number 11, and Strasta, number four. Now uh, that's Santos, she's been playing in the midfield. So just a license to roam here probably for the two players that have come on more so than anything particularly structured in these last 10 minutes from Hearts. Just get the pace in there, inject it and see if we can hit them. As Pritt Cruz strides forward, controls nicely off the chest, looking to see what he's got. As he plays the ball into the area, Charles Arika couldn't quite get there. A little bit of a late challenge on Cruz, but nothing in it, says the referee. As Stobart will look to release very long here. Route 1 stuff at this stage from Darwin Hearts. Ball goes through. Reeve misses it the first attempt, headed it back on from James, but Mifsud's alive to that now. Mindel beaten by that a couple of times, but, but Mifsud's shown he learned on the run, and uh, he's picked that one out as the ball goes back to Thomas. He'll look to play Iriku. Couldn't get the ball off the air, but still found its way through. Iriku drops the shoulder, runs left. And he's beaten the new man for pace, not quite with the speed of the game. Iriku back stick with the left, and that's been cut out timely and has gone for a corner. Great recovery there from the defender there. And I think this will be young Kelly coming off. I hope for his sake it is, because he's been asking to come off for the last 10 minutes. And it's the number 30 coming on, Nathan Lee. So both of the, the Lee boys will be in the back line here, uh, potentially, John. Yeah, Nathan, uh, the oldest out of the two brothers, and um, both uh, great talents of the game. And obviously, one's for the future. So good shift for Eamon Kelly. I haven't got his age here in front of me, but he doesn't, he doesn't look old. He looks like another one of the young production line that Mindel have been putting out this season. So Ariku standing over it. Swung in, but cleared away by Hearts. Second go for Kudo. Plays the ball to Reeve. Lovely little outside flick there to Charles Ariku. Drives at the byline. Little flick back into an area, but picked out again there by Shrestha. Reeve chips it up again in the area of Pritt Prus. And that'll be a... A heart's throw, just a bit of a heavy touch from the replacement skipper number nine, Pritt Pruse. Oh, that's nearly a handball, isn't it, John? You haven't seen a more deliberate handball. I actually didn't see it, to be oh, honest. But, the um, players looking out again, for one another. Again, the smile gave it away, didn't it? Yeah. So... Players from all around the world in this Darwin Premier League, John, but I'm just thinking I'm pretty confident that uh, Pritt Pruse is Estonian as well, isn't he? Yeah, he is. So two, two Estonians um, in the Mindel lineup. Because uh, we've got Japanese, we've got uh, Estonians. Yes, yeah, so the, the two of them, yeah. German we've out there tonight. Welsh. We've got... Obviously a, a, a hat full of, of Nepalese in the Darwin Hearts side as well. Um, strong in the Nepalese community. Uh, first season in the Premier League for them this, this year. And that's balls played back to Reeve. Out to Lee. Switched it to Colm. To Lee. In the middle through Prigic. Prigic looking to release. Oh, fantastic run from McGowan. Just couldn't bring... Oh, he's got the ball back under control and played a lovely ball there to Tanu. I think Pruse is offside. 
He was onside, but misses everything, John. So unlike Prit Prus. Yeah, I think it, just for, just for, just looking at it now, I think they just saved the the, the, the left hand side post there. But with Prit Prus there, uh, you expect a lot more there. You obviously we wanted the the back of the net there, so he'd be disappointed with his effort there. And that's why he needs those minutes you were talking about earlier, John, to get those touches out, um, particularly with a 2 0 scoreline. You don't want him doing that at nil or when the game's on the line. So he's nearly won the ball back there off Keane. Keane with the outside of the left boot to Mweezy. Mweezy, ball's being called forward for him, but it hasn't been able to make it forward. He's gone backwards instead, flicked back to Mweezy. Makuju's calling out for it. He's got it now, loves a turn. Couldn't beat the three defenders that were on him as Kudo's got the ball well. Plays it to Prigic, stands up in the midfield, looks to turn and turns it over. Driving now, and the shot coming there from a mile out as it's cleaned up by Weeks. Arjun Patel, full of confidence, not full of conviction. Yeah, and but we expect it from a hard scene that never gives up, never says die. They're still going, they're trying to get one back. So McGowan with the ball in the midfield. Lee, looking for the ball over to Ariku. Managed to pick him out. Chester down by Ariku, but Prigic didn't read it. Wasn't there to, to convert. This is that man, Arjun, again. He's put the ball over. Timely intervention by Mifsud. He's, he's gone all right at centre-back. Yeah, he's, he's read the game really, really well. He's not the quickest player, but he reads the game really, really well. And again, with his experience in the back line tonight, they, they, to be honest, they never look like conceding tonight. So Mweezy's on the ball. As we move into the 90th, uh, 89th minute, I should say, of, of this second half. That's frustration there from Wheezy. Didn't need to do that. As you could hear the, the cry coming from, from Lee as he hit the ground. So he'll be all right as he takes the free kick. And we look ahead. We've got Hearts have the short turnaround. They've got the Friday night game, John, against Casarina, who'll be... Um, looking to get three points to get their season back on track after a couple of disappointing results. Mindel have the extra 24 hours rest and have the early, the four o'clock kickoff in what will be hot conditions against Port Darwin uh, on Saturday. Uh, what are you doing between now and then, John, um, both as a player and as a coach? Again, you know, we spoke about it before, JD. You know, you, you're looking after your body first and foremost. Um, you know, I, I, I do presume most, most teams' training would be very, very light in terms of just tactical trainings and so forth, uh, recovery trainings. Um, and again, game analysis would be a key key component in terms of what coaches will be doing uh, these next six weeks. So tonight you can see Hellenic's coach, who, he was down here earlier today having a having a look at uh, the Haas team and the, and the Mindel team. So, you know, it, it, this sort of reminds me of the, 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 the Christmas holiday, uh, you know, period where the Premier League teams are playing and they're playing games you know, two games or three games a week. So yeah, that congested fixture yeah, list. Yeah, and and they always say whoever comes out on top, on you know, you win a lot of games in that in that period. You either you know get away from relegation or you're in the top four. So be very very interesting six weeks, JD. So it's the number ten Wheezy that's picked up a, a needless yellow card here at the death. Just some frustration coming out on a few of his challenges, and the referee said just calm that down as uh, we move into injury time here at Darwin Football Stadium in this round 19 match. With Mindel Aces playing the ball short, the referee said, how about the whistle? That's uh, almost deliberate time-wasting there from, from Mifsud, showing his experience to take it just before the whistle's blown. So this will just be chipped into an area for any number of targets here for Mindel, but you'd think Prit Prus would be the main man that's going to be on the end of this Mifsud left footer as it's hitting the general area of Iriku, but it's won first by Hartz. Ball falls to Kudo. Over to Lee. Keane's got the ball now, plays it out in that right-hand channel. as Shrestha's on it. Back to Keane. Back to Shrestha. Puts the ball out in the area of... Makuju couldn't get the ball around Lee, and that'll be full time, says our referee, Tim Lane. And with that, Mindel Aces secure three points. They move to 22 competition points, and at the halfway point in this Darwin Men's Premier League, they turn first in the head for home with Hellenic Athletic Football Club in second, just a couple of points behind, John. 
and, and, and deserved tonight, JD. Um, they had their chances. Uh, obviously, Hart, you know, there was patches where Hart came into the game. But, um, you know, top of the, top of the table, um, obviously, they're expecting players to come back as well. And Daniel McCormack would be thrilled with this result tonight. Takes them top of the table. Uh, looking forward to seeing how the other teams react to this. But, um, yeah, fully deserved tonight. Yes, so as I've just said, moves them up to 22 competition points. Uh, the goal difference, not quite as strong as, as Hellenic, but Hellenic on 21 points, so hot on the heels. It's still anybody's race, but it's always good to turn and head for home first. Uh, and then we have Casarina in third and Azuri in fourth. They'll be the two teams that make their round 19 appearances next Tuesday night, and won't that be a ding-dong battle? Uh, the storyline really there for a Casarina is to distance themselves from the bottom three and really establish a top-half, bottom-half situation. With Azuri, they've got the opportunity to close that gap up into to third position um, and put some gap between themselves in, and Port Darwin and uh, the team that we've just seen tonight in Darwin Hearts in fifth and sixth and really establish a, a top four. Um, so plenty to play for there. But the next game, as we spoke about, is on Friday night. It will feature the side that we've seen go down here 2-0 tonight in Darwin Hearts. They've got the short turnaround against Casarina Athletic Football Club. Um, but we will go to a quick holding graphic and come back with the post-game show for you in just a moment. So... So welcome back here to Darwin, uh, Darwin Football Stadium, Larrakia Park. We've seen a very entertaining 2-0 victory to Minder Laces, which puts them top of the league, as you can sure you can hear in the background their team song going on without their inspirational skipper from tonight, Tavian Lukasen, who joins myself and John Tanboris here. Tavian, welcome. Congratulations on your game tonight, mate. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So from, from my perspective, obviously, first season in the league, first season back in a long time, and you've had the armband tonight. You must be really doing things right at training. Uh, trying to, just trying to keep the boys motivated and... You know, just keeping good vibes, especially when we're not playing our best um, and just bringing that back and, you know, just playing football and enjoying the game. John? Okay, um, again, watching you play, I've seen you play quite a number of times now. I saw, I saw your first game where you, I think you scored a hat-trick in your first game and so forth. So, again, you're finding the back of the net. Obviously frustrated tonight. I mean, first half especially, you had a, uh, probably two or three chances. Could have got another hat-trick tonight. Um, nil all at half-time. What was Dan McCormack's message coming out in, in the second half? You know, keep, keep our intensity, keep the ball moving, but at the same time, start taking those opportunities. Um, myself, you know, I can be critical myself and say, look, I should have scored a few more, definitely in the first half. I rushed it, it's been under pressure, um, and just decided to take my time, take a breath when that ball was coming in and direct it to the right way. So I think halftime changed how we thought we were playing, also kept the intensity up, and Dan as a coach, honestly, I can talk about him all day. Great. 
I guess, and, and just to finish off, obviously uh, we spoke about the fact that this squad puts, puts you guys back at the top of the league, um, but it's been a, a, probably a frustrating run of results. I think that's fair to say for you guys of late. Um, probably look to try and make a statement on, on uh, Saturday against Hearts. That didn't quite come to fruition, but certainly tonight got your groove back. Um, is that certainly something that was discussed before the game? Yeah, certainly. That was something that, you know, people watching could have seen that we might have been out of that groove for the last few weeks, but... You know, it takes our coach, it takes a few players to stick their hand up and say, right, we're not, we're not having this. Um, we've got our fun as much as we've got to be analytical about ourselves and look at what we're not doing, doing right, but enjoy the game. And I think today you saw boys smiling, enjoying the game, playing it and just taking it on. And, and one last question, that crowd, even for a Tuesday night, geez, that must be good to play with that 12th man behind you. Yeah, definitely. And even the Hearts, you know, got to give them credit. They, they bring a big crowd and they bring good atmosphere and that's what you want to see. You know, you want to see the other team being cheered on too and, you know, just the atmosphere here. It's great for Darwin football. Brilliant. So that's it here from us. Uh, from, on behalf of John Tamburis and myself, well done again, Tavi Lovigson. Mindel Aces 2-0 over Darwin Hearts and they move back to the top of the Darwin Men's Premier League at the halfway point of the season. We'll see you again on Friday night for the team that we've just seen tonight be defeated 2-0 Darwin Hearts up against Casarina Football Club to kick off round 10 here in the Darwin Men's Premier League.